art nerds. So not too long ago, Artify contacted me to ask if I'd be interested in reviewing some of their new brush tip alcohol markers. I made it clear that this was going to be an honest review and they said they were interested in hearing my feedback. So while Artify did send me these markers to review, I was not paid for this. I was not compensated in any way, shape or form other than re receiving these markers care of. So these arrived from Amazon sent via Artify, which is a common way to receive things from me when co companies do contact me. It's usually someone who's selling on Amazon and I've already gotten rid of the cardboard Amazon box. Y'all know what an Amazon box looks like and they were wrapped in bubble wrap. So my goal today is to unbox these, check out the packaging, check out the markers themselves and do some swatching in my handy dandy Strathmore mixed media sketchbook. I have used Strathmore 200 series mixed media sketchbooks for almost all of my alcohol marker reviews spanning back about a decade. I've been doing this for a long time. So if you're interested in affordable, economical alcohol markers, I have probably reviewed the one for you here on the channel or over on the blog. So I hope you'll check them out. I have a huge playlist of alcohol marker reviews that I'll link in the cards as well as down in the description. And I'm also going to share my show notes, the notes that I take while I'm working on the review in the description down below as well. So let's go ahead, let's crack open these markers and get started. Okay, so these should be brush tip alcohol markers. They came in a plastic wrap bag and it seems like they have a nice storage box included. Once I get these open, I'll let you go. I'll let you guys know how much these usually go for and remember to check the description below for links to where you can order your own if you like what I have to say in this review. So this seems to be a very sturdy plastic box, reusable, which those of you who watch my reviews know, I love when packaging is designed to be reusable, when it's designed to actually hold the product, when you don't just totally destroy the packaging, just getting at the art supplies inside. So that's already a big thumbs up to Artify. It has their branding on the outside. It has a convenient carrying handle, which could make this a good alcohol marker option for people who travel a lot, like convention artists. And it's got a neat little latch on both sides. So already I'm liking what I see here. So inside we have some triangular markers. It seems like they have A, N, B, 18. Let's see, all of them have that on it. There is no color designator on here except at the cap where it's just a color family. I'm fine with that. Honestly, I am not super fond of the cutesy tween names that art supplies often receive, like blush, pink, doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Color numbers are helpful. And there do seem to be color-coded caps. There is a broad tip and a brush tip with the brush designated with a gray collar so you can easily find it. And they do indeed have brush tips. And these seem like very similar to the Milo Art, to the Ohuhu, to the Graphite marker. So it is probably a compressed fiber brush tip. brush and chisel tipped markers. They have a compressed fiber brush tip, at least until I've discovered otherwise. There are 48 markers in this particular set and this set goes for $27.99 on Amazon, which is not a bad deal. They also have a 108 color set, similar make and build for around $60, which is about 50 cents a marker, which is a pretty good bargain. Also, for my friends who, like me, like to store our markers horizontally, don't want to store them up and down because you will get a dead end on one of the tips, you can actually use the clear plastic cap that's down at the bottom. I'll move the camera to show you guys. You can use it to prop up your markers and create a handy easel, and that took very little effort on my part. I don't know if it's designed to do that, but it works, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. 
So while we're talking about packaging, it does seem like the markers just kind of free float in one of four quadrants. So there's a four way divider, but it's not divided for each individual marker. And each uh, divider holds 12 markers, so you can sort them out however works best for you. It seems like Artify already has them kind of sorted out, which I appreciate. You have your blues and your greens. You have, for the most part, your cool grays, your warm grays with a couple greens in here. You have your reds, your red violets and your purples. And then over here, you've got your yellows, a blue and some yellow reds. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take a look at these markers, talk about the bodies, compare them to some other comparable alcohol markers on the market so you guys are informed when you're making your choice to purchase. And uh, then I'm gonna resort them into four different color families for my own convenience. After that, we're gonna go ahead and swatch them and play around with them a little bit in the Strathmore mixed media sketch. As a refresher, each Artify marker has the broad chisel end labeled. This is what the chisel looks like. It's got the brush end labeled and it also has a gray collar. There are no color names or numbers on the main body itself, but there is a color number and a color coding chip at the end to help you identify which colors are which. They're mm, not as large as some of the alcohol markers I've used. This sort of triangular body is hit or miss for me. It's supposed to be more ergonomic, but when it's a larger body, it actually causes a lot of hand fatigue for me. This is one of the smaller ones, so it'll be interesting to see if I have some of those same hand issues when coloring. Now it's designed to not roll, and it does roll little bit but it's not as prone to rolling on a straight old flat surface as a completely round marker like the sketch markers are a little bit prone to rolling there's no notches no nubbies no grips to help you remove the cap there's no ergonomic grips to help with hand fatigue or anything like that that we've seen with other markers but there is a matte body finish which does help with gripping markers. So I have reviewed really smooth markers in the past that have a really glossy finish and those tend to be pretty slippery in the hands, especially some of the smaller ones. But let's go ahead and line out our other alcohol markers so we can do a little bit of a compare. I've assembled what I consider to be a pretty comparable lineup. We have the Artify, we have an Ohu brush marker, we have a Graphite brush marker, we have a Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend brush marker, we've got a Copic Sketch, we've got a Copic Chow, we've got a Blick Studio brush marker, we've got a Sketch Marker brush, and we have a Prismacolor marker. Now, as of this moment, I don't actually know if the Artify markers are refillable, but I will have that information for you guys before we actually do the swatches. What I do know is that it seems like only a few of these markers in this particular lineup have refills available. Maybe you can refill them by dripping ink into them, but most don't have refills specifically marketed for these color numbers or for those particular brands. So it's definitely a refill at your own risk sort of situation. Now, the ones that I know for a fact are refillable are this slim margin here. I know that Prismacolor is not refillable. I know there are no refills available in the US for the sketch markers. I know that while Tri-Blend used, or rather Spectrum Noir used to make alcohol refills, I don't know if they have been color coordinated to go with their Tri-Blend markers, and I haven't seen them as available lately. I don't actually know if Graphite markers are refillable, but they are very similar to the Milo Art and the Milo Pro markers, so probably not. I am fairly sure Ohuhu markers are not refillable, although you can now buy replacements for markers that run out. And I need to find out for you guys really quick whether Artify markers are refillable or not. Why is refillability important? It's less waste. 
Every time we use up a marker and then we have to toss it, that's waste going in a landfill. These are plastic products. They can last a hundred years, theoretically, with care and careful handling. Copic markers, I've had some of my Copics for 10 plus years with no sign of needing to throw any of them out. I just need to refill them. So I strongly encourage companies that are going to be in the art supply game for a long period of time that have products that are popular and that people are constantly buying, please consider making your products reusable and refillable. So now I wanna test how easy these are to uncap. And this is the part that everyone hates because I leave my markers uncapped for a period of time and that bugs people. So the Artify marker was fairly easy to uncap. If you have arthritis issues, if you have grip issues, you may struggle with it as there's nothing ridged or really grippy about it. It's a little bit easier to uncap than the Graphite brush marker. You guys saw me struggle with that just now. It's about on par with the Ohuhu marker. You want markers that are fairly easy to uncap, but not so easy to uncap that they basically uncap themselves or they dry out you know, in between uses. So it is pretty important. I also know that alcohol markers have a really wide range, a really wide age appeal. So they appeal to younger artists, they appeal to older artists, they appeal to people who like to do illustration, they appeal to people who do comics, they appeal to crafters. So the grip issues is important because you're not just dealing with a young demographic, you're also dealing with possibly a disabled demographic, you're dealing with an older demographic, you're dealing with a demographic that may have grip issues like myself. So you want that Goldilocks sweet spot of how easy are these to open. You can see what I mean with the sketch marker. It is very prone to rolling off the table. Whereas the Artify marker, once you've placed it down, it kind of stays put. So I have these markers sorted out so that all the brushes kind of line up. And I also have them to divide it into two categories. All these brushes up here seem to use the same kind of fiber brush tip. All the same length, same kind of material. All the brushes down here are using a foam rubber brush tip. So why does this matter? Why is it important? Fiber has a tendency to fray. It's not as resilient as foam rubber. After you've used it and you've colored with it for a while, it starts to get beaten up, chewed up, frayed, and you're not going to be able to fill in small areas because it's gonna bleed all over the place. With foam rubber, it's going to be more resilient. You're gonna maintain this tip. I think I've had this marker for a while. It's had the same sharp foam rubber tip despite being used repeatedly. So foam rubber does tend to last longer than fiber on alcohol markers. So generally when I'm buying alcohol markers for me to use at home, I go with the foam rubber markers. They are more resilient. I can do more techniques like the over blending technique that I've demonstrated here on the channel. And I can count on them to perform well time and time again. With the fiber tips, they are more economical. They're cheaper for companies to offer. And that's why you can get, you know, two markers for a dollar from some of these brands. And it doesn't inherently have to be bad, but they do get worn out very quickly. They don't seem to offer replacement brushes. So once you've worn it out, it's just a direct marker. And uh, I am not as happy with the resiliency when it comes to the fiber tips on markers. Now, why don't I talk about the chisel tips? Well, to be frank, most chisel tips are the same. They're all kind of a compressed fiber. They're all a little scratchy, they're all a little dry, and I don't really use them that much when I'm making art. But if you've got strong opinions about which markers have the best chisel tips other than the Prismacolor Original, which really does have the best chisel tip with that tried chisel tip, it's great. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on alcohol markers. So something else I noticed is that the Artify marker is one of the longer alcohol markers with the exception of the Triblin marker, which is technically three markers in one. It's about as long, let's compare real quick, as Prismacolor. In fact, it's longer 
than Prismacolor markers. So it may not necessarily work in your existing storage solution. It kind of depends on how you're already storing your markers. However, I feel like Artify is trying to appeal to newer marker users, people who might not already have a huge collection. And I do think the plastic box that you receive when you get the 48 piece set is a great way to store your markers. You can store them horizontally, which is the proper way to store alcohol markers. All right, so I don't wanna to continue to torture you guys with open markers. I know that bugs some people, but I do wanna point out one more thing while it's convenient. So some markers you see have a color name, like here on this Ohuhu cap, we have PB7, pastel blue. On Copic, we have GO3, meadow green. On the Blick Studio Brush Marker, we have 067, bright green. On the Sketch Marker, we have BR60, mid-brown. Every different brand, whether it's Copic, Blick, Prismacolor, Ohuhu, Artify, they all generally have their own color system. In fact, that's one of the ways we can tell when markers are made by the same manufacturer but distributed by different companies is when they have the same colors with the same color names and the same color numbers showing up over and over and over again, especially if it has the same body. And by body, I just mean the base marker itself. You can buy alcohol markers from China and basically drop ship them. And what that means is you screen your own information and your own branding on the markers. I saw that when I reviewed the Color It alcohol markers a while back. Does this make them subpar? Does this make them less? Not necessarily, but it does mean that this company didn't necessarily do all their R R all their own R&D. If they've received customer complaints, they may not be able to make individual tweaks on the markers. They may have to go with a different manufacturer. So it's really just a matter of taste. If you're working with less expensive markers, it's more likely that they purchased them from another country and rebranded them. So it's really kind of up to you and how you like to buy. But I do think if you're buying like Ohuhu, Artify, Arteza markers, that's you're probably not super concerned with that. I just thought it was a point worth pointing out. So let's go ahead and recap these puppies. I've kind of shifted everything and I will show you guys one of my favorite editing tricks in a moment. The listing for these Artify markers, I could not find whether or not they are refillable, but it also doesn't offer any refills. So I think it's pretty safe to say that these are not officially refillable. Can you, when they're kind of dried out, use a colorless blender ink or 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol to kind of reconstitute them and get a little extra life out of them? Yes, I have shown how to do that here on the channel, not with these, but with some other markers that are on the market. So that is something you can do to get a little extra life out of them. Do I recommend it? I mean, once you've already used up most of the color or it's already dried out, what's it even matter? You were gonna throw it away anyway. So it's kind of a do it at your own risk scenario. Uh, something else I did notice though is in the answers, people ask, do you store these vertically or horizontally? So I'm gonna say it one more time for the friendos in the back. Despite the case encouraging you to store these vertically, i.e. up and down, you really ought to store your alcohol markers horizontally. Why? This allows, so there's a wick inside all alcohol markers. It's not just liquid, there's a wick. Even Crayola markers, which are not water uh, alcohol, they're water-based, have a wick inside them. The wick contains the ink. So that way it's not just free-flowing and it's not gonna evaporate as quickly. It's also less likely to leak all over the place, especially if you were, say, on an airplane. So in order for both tips to get the ink, you need to store them horizontally because the wick is going throughout the body of this thing and gravity will pull all the liquid down to the bottom if you store them horizontally and you're going to end up with a dead end, the end that's usually up in the air. So for longest and best use, you really should store your alcohol markers horizontally. Take it from an old alcohol marker person, you want to store them horizontally have talked a lot about these markers and I am sure you guys want to see me go ahead and swatch them. 
So as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to be swatching them in a Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook. I do pretty much all of my alcohol marker swatches in this book. It a lot, not this particular one. This is like the fifth one now. Um, but I use Strathmore's paper because it gives me something consistent. It is a, con a constant between the different marker brands and it allows me to accurately review the markers that we're testing today. And generally, I like to do a field test and I plan on doing a field test with these markers where I actually create an illustration with them. So that's not only good for me, it really allows me to speak about the markers and to point out the flaws and point out what works about the markers. It's also great for people who already own the markers and they wanna know how they can use them, what they can do to get the effects they want. Something else I wanna point out is this 48 piece set does come with a colorless blender. So when I am doing some of the blending tests that I will do in this video, I'm gonna use the blender that comes with it. Generally, when I'm reviewing alcohol markers and it doesn't come with a blender, I use a Prismacolor blender, a Copic Sketch blender, or a Blick Studio blender. So in order for this review not to take 1 million years, I am going to swatch one marker for you guys while talking, and then I'll do the rest in time lapse. And I wanna swatch both ends because I wanna see that the color is consistent from one end to the other. Sometimes with alcohol markers, you might get a darker end or a darker color from one end. This was particularly prevalent with some watercolor markers I reviewed. So this is B635. All right, so that is the chisel. This is the brush tip. I'm actually going to change the camera a little bit so you guys can really see me swatch with the brush tip. And something I'm already noticing, which is just really, really common with these inexpensive alcohol markers from Amazon, it's true for Ohuhu, it's true for the Arctics, it's true for every one of these that I've reviewed from Amazon, you do get some bleeding out, just a little bit. So what I would recommend is that you work big with these markers. Use these for larger pieces. If you're drawing teeny tiny little faces, keep the details to a minimal minimum because the, blend, the bleeding is gonna be a little bit more noticeable if you're doing teeny tiny details. All right, so yes, the brush is a compressed fiber. It's pretty comparable to all the other compressed fiber brushes on the market. So similar to the Milo Art or the Ohuhu brushes, it's not my, my absolute favorite. I don't find them to be as resilient. They don't last as long. They do have a tendency to get mushy, but that doesn't necessarily make this just a bad marker inherently. And different people use alcohol markers for different things. I also am considering the price point is really pretty good. And generally the cheapest you're gonna get with the foam rubber brushes, the ones I really like, are around $3 each with the Blick Studio brush markers. So those foam rubber brushes do cost a lot more. And I do think the fiber brushes work really well as kind of an introduction to alcohol marker. You're gonna be able to do a lot of the same stuff you'd be able to do with a fiber brush. It's just gonna get mushy faster. You're not gonna be able to do as fine details. And um, it just, just it just generally doesn't last as long, but these aren't refillable anyway. So what I would recommend is you can use this set as a starter set and as the colors run out or as you need to buy other colors, you can augment them with slightly more resilient, slightly nicer alcohol markers. So this is a great way to get started with alcohol markers affordably, be able to make lots of art that you'll enjoy and then transition into, you know, legacy markers later on.
All right, so we have all the colors down on the paper with the exception of the colorless blender, of course. Now I wanna kinda of demonstrate the brush for you guys. Uh, hopefully I won't wreck it, but there is a possibility that I will. So cross your fingers for me, guys. So that's our brush. So you can see how it's already starting to get kind of white at the tip. That indicates that it's starting to kind of fray a little. And the more it frays, the less you're gonna be able to get in there and do fine detail. So my preference when it comes to these inexpensive twin tip alcohol markers is I prefer when the marker has a little fine tip instead of a chisel tip on the back. But this is holding up okay. Uh, inexpensive fiber tips have really come a long way in the past. Well, they've really come a long way since the past. And this seems to be holding up a little bit better than I kind of expected it to. You can also see where I really push down, we do get some bleed through. This is a heavier paper, but you still should expect some bleed through when you're really working an, uh, an illustration on this kind of paper. So when you're doing a lot of layers or if you're doing a lot of over blending techniques. So that's not unusual and it's not necessarily to the detriment of these markers, but you do wanna work with a piece of cardstock in between the sheets of your sketchbook so you don't ruin the next page. So next, we're going to do what I know everybody's been waiting for. We're going to do some blending testing. So I've picked out three blues here. We've got B003, we've got B016, and we've got B028. Hopefully, they're all sort of in the same color range. I'm looking for warm blues here, and this will give us a chance to test out the colorless blender. We're gonna use the brush tip because frankly, that's my preference. So that's another reason I prefer brush tips just in general is that it's a little bit easier to blend colors out. So the way alcohol markers work, if you guys are new to alcohol markers, is it's not going, the colorless blender is not gonna pick up the color and move it. What it does instead is it basically forces it to the back of the paper. This is the same color over again. You can also usually get three tones of color out of your alcohol markers. Let me demonstrate that for you guys here. And if you're looking for marker tutorials, in addition to marker reviews, I hopefully have you guys covered. I've got some favorites that I'd love to share with you guys. You guys can find a link to the playlist down below. Now, something else I'm noticing, and this might not be true for all colors in this box, for all color families in this box, but there's some pretty steep color switches, color leaps, which might require a lot of blending and a lot of working in order to get a seamless blend. So if you're looking for seamless transitions, you're not necessarily going to be able to achieve that with this set. All right, so this was one layer of B003. That's layer two, same color, and it will dry lighter, just like with paints, alcohol markers dry a little bit lighter than they initially go down. And the colors used in this blended swatch were B003, B016, and B028, with the colorless blender at the front, and you can see you really get a strong reaction with the colorless blender, but it also can cause a lot of bleeding. So I'm gonna let the second layer dry all the way and we'll add a third layer. Okay, so using the magic of just pausing as I'm recording, it's had a chance to dry out and that's layer number three. So when you're working with markers, whether you have a big collection or you have a tiny collection, layering the same color over and over again can really expand your range. 
So speaking of blending, I want to try a few different alcohol marker blenders and solvents so we can test for reactivity. So here is our Artify marker. It is B028. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six different solvents. So I'm going to make six different swatches. And we're gonna start with the Artify Colorless Blender. We already know that works. And what we're looking for is some reactivity, some movement. Next, we've got a Copic Colorless Blender. Then we have a Blick Studio Brush Colorless Blender. So all of these are alcohol markers. Alcohol markers are not, or they should not be water reactive. So applying water to this isn't gonna tell us much of anything. Next we have an Artist Loft Colorless Blender. Then we have an Ohuhu Colorless Blender. And one of the reasons I'm doing this reactivity testing is I want to see how well these markers would play with other markers. Like if you wanted to use this Artify set as the start of an alcohol marker collection, or maybe you've got a few different markers, but you want more colors. So I usually do this kind of reactivity test because it helps me decide whether or not these markers play nice with other markers. Okay, so we can see reactivity to all of the markers. We have the Artify, we have the Copic, we have the Blick, we have a Dying Artist Loft marker, we have an Ohuhu, and we have Rubbing Alcohol. So theoretically, these Artify markers should play nice with your existing alcohol marker collection, or you could use these Artify markers as the start of a marker collection, and then work in refillable, more expensive markers as you have the opportunity and the ink. So for our final test for today we're going to do what I call the ball test and this is kind of like a prelim to the field test and I do all this testing before I even dive into the field test for a few different reasons one I'm an illustrator, so I may not use markers the same way you might use markers. I have my own specific bias, and I started with Prismacolor and then moved on to Copic markers, and I still use a wide variety of brands in my marker illustrations to this day. So my use case might not be your use case. So I do a lot of different tests so that people who use alcohol markers differently than how I use them will still be able to decide if these markers would work for them. This also helps me decide how how I want to use these markers in the field test. I don't like making ugly art and I want to understand the products that I'm reviewing so that when I'm making the field test I can make the best piece possible with the supplies that I have on hand. Doing all of these different tests gives me the information I need to make a piece of art that is going to shine basically because like I said who wants to make ugly art and who wants to watch me make ugly art this is also helpful to people who already own these markers who are looking for tutorials tips and tricks to help them get the most out of the markers they already own so I try to keep my field test on a different note than uh, from the original unboxing swatch with the field test I may say some harsh things but my general focus is figuring out how to use the markers offer suggestions to the company on ways that they can improve the markers and help people who already own the markers figure out how to use their markers. So generally, I keep the field test a separate video from the unbox and swatch. It means we don't have two hour long run times and it means people who are looking for specific information can find it sooner rather than having to skip through the video. So for the blending ball, the ball test here, we're going to be basically doing a mini field test. We're gonna test out how well these blend. We're gonna test out how much they bleed. We're gonna test out whether they're pretty dry. We're gonna see whether or not the brush tips fray. We're gonna get a lot of information from this test. But I do hope if you've enjoyed this video that you guys will stick around and check out the field test once it's released. So for the blending ball, I select all colors within a similar color family. I decided to go ahead and use the blue since those worked well together, but I wanted a fourth 
darker color. So I grabbed R807, which seems like it's a dark purple from the swatches. And this will also be useful to know because frankly, we don't actually have a lot of really dark colors in this set. Another option I could have selected for this would be CG08. But generally, I don't really like shading with dark grays unless I have to because they do have a tendency to kind of neutralize everything that I've so I'm going to start with my lightest actual color. And this area that I've reserved up here is going to be the highlight and I'm going to color in the rest. And I'm not one of those people who likes doing the tiny super full circle colors like you guys saw me demonstrate. I find that that kind of leads to repetitive restraint for me and I'm really trying to spare my wrist. So I'm using some of the largest strokes I can, generally kind of moving in the direction of the ball. So I've got these kind of curvy linear, curvy linear shapes going on. So before it has a chance to dry out too much, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my blender marker and try to get some softer blend on this highlight. Not seeing a lot of movement, but I'm really saturating the area. I'm going over it several times to try and push that color back as much as possible. I don't expect to get the white of the paper. I just want a softer transition between the white of the paper and the first color we started with. And I'm working wet into wet here because my goal is to get as soft a blend as possible. So this is a second layer of our first color. And you can see as we layer the marker, streaking is less noticeable. I'm trying to leave a bit of a rim highlight with these. Next, we're going to go in with B016, our next darkest blue, which you guys can see what I was saying earlier. There's really a large gap in between the colors. So you do get a lot of colors with the Artify set. I don't think you get enough skin tones, frankly. I think we could have sacrificed some of the pinks for some more skin tones. But you do get a wide variety of really vibrant colors. So this could be a good set for people who like to do, say, botanical illustration, or they might be doing interior design, or they may not render a lot of people. Okay, so next I'm going back in with B003. I'm going to try to blend this color out some because my goal with this test is to get as smooth a transition of color as possible using the colors we've got. Now, as I've mentioned before, I'm an illustrator. I'm also a comic artist. So a lot of the art I create is portraits, it's figurature. So I'm drawing a lot of people. So when I'm reviewing alcohol markers, I do want to see a lot of skin tones, but that's just my own personal preference. Okay, that was another layer of B016. Next, I'm going in with B028. So I disclose that because I feel like having that information, knowing that about me, gives you more information to make your decision with. If you find you draw a lot of people, you like to draw people, you like to do maybe fashion design, you may decide you want to buy some more skin tones to add to this set. There's a few companies that offer additional packs of skin tones. You may decide to skip this set or you may even decide to buy the larger set, the 108 colors. Okay, so that was B028, blended back out with B016. And then we have our final color, R807, which is supposedly a purple and it should give us, I wish it was cooler because it's a little warm, so it kind of creates so generally when you're shading things, generally, rule of thumb, you want to work from warm to cool. So I'm layering back over this with our dark blue, B028. But I am fairly satisfied with the blends we were able to get with these markers. 
Alright guys, today we took a look at the Artify brush markers. This is a 48 piece set of alcohol markers with a brush tip and a chisel tip. This also includes a colorless blender. Not all alcohol marker sets include a colorless blender. So my thoughts on this set. This particular set is currently $27.99 on Amazon. So that's almost but not quite two markers for a dollar. I think that's a fair price. I think it's a very accessible price and I think $27.99 for 48 markers is a great way to start your adventures with alcohol markers. I did have some minor -ish issues with these markers. They do have fiber tips which I'm never that hot on but it's very common with affordable alcohol markers. They, those tend to fray over time. These are not refillable, so as markers run out, you're gonna have to replace them. If Artify offers replacement markers, not all companies do that, but I think if you got in contact with them, they might be able to work with you. I like the packaging a lot, but the packaging invites you to store it vertically when really the way you wanna store your alcohol markers is horizontally. And I've explained why in this video. So hopefully I've converted you to storing your markers horizontally so you don't end up with dead and dry alcohol markers. We do get a really vibrant selection of colors, but they are mostly mid-tone centric. I am glad that Artify didn't lean very heavily on the grays. Some of the other alcohol marker sets I've reviewed are very gray centric which is useful for certain types of art, but for illustration, generally you're gonna want a lot of fun, bright colors. I am disappointed that this set is really, really light when it comes to skin tones. There's just not a lot of skin tones. I think I counted four usable skin tones in this set, which those of you who are familiar with my work, y'all know I'm a comic artist. I draw a lot of people. So when I'm reviewing alcohol markers, I like to see a lot of useful skin tones. I like dark skin tones. I like light skin tones. I like blush colors. I like colors that work well for natural hair colors. I like colors that work well for dyed hair colors. But my thoughts in general, I like this set. I feel like it's com comparable to the Ohuhu brush marker set, which for a long time, the Ohuhu set was like my de facto recommendation for inexpensive alcohol markers for people interested in trying out alcohol markers. Let me grab that for you. So this is the 48 piece Ohuhu set. Um, it does come with a colorless blender, which I pulled out for this review. Side by side, I like the Artify box a lot better than the Ohuhu bag. I find that if I try to organize my colors with Ohuhu, if I'm not using rubber bands, they kind of just get all over the place. This hard box has four sections to it, so you can divide them by color families, and they're not really prone to shifting around. Now, I do know Ohuhu does offer replacement colors if you use them up. You can get them in sets of three. I don't yet know if Artify does that, but you guys let me know down in the description below. I also want to disclose, for all honesty, this Ohuhu set was purchased with funds from my coffee. So people tipped me, and I used that to buy the Ohuhu set to review, whereas Artify contacted me and asked if I would be interested in reviewing their markers and sent me this set to review. But I was not compensated by either company in any other way financially other than receiving these markers. So I do think it's really important to be honest and upfront with you guys in case that kind of affects your decision. I've reviewed a lot of inexpensive and sometimes downright cheap alcohol markers here on the channel over the years. I've also reviewed some really nice expensive alcohol markers. So surely I have an alcohol marker recommendation or review that will be helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. I also have a boatload of alcohol marker tutorials, whether I show you how to get the most use, the best use out of these inexpensive alcohol marker sets, or how to get the most out of your Copics, how to blend, how to color skin, how to color hair. I've got you covered here on the channel. And if there's something you'd like to learn how to color, let me know in the comments or hit me up on the Paintbox, my art-centric Discord server. So I had a lot of fun. 
unboxing and swatching these Artify alcohol markers. I would love to see Artify offer refills for these, whether it's alcohol inks that you can use to refill them and alcohol inks can also be used for alcohol ink marbling. There's lots of other things you can do with alcohol inks like dyeing resin. So they, it wouldn't just be useful to refill these markers. It does have an extended use. So that is something they could consider. I do think that these are probably manufactured by another company and just sold through Artify. So they may not have the ability to offer those kind of inks, but they could maybe inquire with their manufacturer and find out if that's possible. I think the price point is good. I like the box. I think this is a great way to start your adventures in alcohol markers or inexpensively add a bunch of new colors to your existing collection. I would like to see refills, as I mentioned, and I'm not super fond of the fiber brush tip, but I do understand the necessity of that at such a low price point. So have you guys used the new Artified brush markers? If you have, give me your thoughts. Let me know what you guys thought of these down in the description below. I do have a field test video where I'm going to render an illustration that I've created using these markers coming up. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm thinking spring, I'm thinking flowers, maybe a flower fairy to go with the dragonfly fairy I did a while back, something like that. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you keep an eye on the channel. If you guys are new here, hi, welcome. I'm glad this was your first video. Do me a huge favor if you like this video and click subscribe and click the bell notification. So Theoretically, YouTube lets you know when I go live. I update my community tab all the time with information about live streams, upcoming reviews, and more. So if you want to keep up with what's going on on the channel, you can follow my community tab or you can add me on Instagram and get loads of art at Instagram.com slash Sue. So before I say goodbye, I do want to say a huge, huge thanks to Artify for contacting me and seeing if I'd be interested in reviewing their markers. I am. Hopefully I've given them some food for thought. They did say they were interested in hearing my feedback on these markers. Markers. Hopefully I've given you guys some food for thought and hopefully I've given you another option for inexpensive alcohol markers. I also want to thank my amazing patrons on Patreon. Their continued support helps make videos like this one possible. Yes, Artify did send the markers for me to review, but I still donated my time to review these markers and my amazing patrons help make that more feasible. Time is money. Resources are money and I do use a lot of different resources when I'm reviewing markers like this and it does take a lot of time. So if it weren't for my Patreon, I wouldn't be able to justify it. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this afternoon and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Bye guys!